Now enter Pope Julius II, who the Luminarium Encyclopedia believed to be warlike and ruthless. He set out to reform the Catholic Church, influenced by the Medici family, which the Britannica claims they were more than a benefit to the Renaissance. He set out to rid Italy of all foreign invaders. He was also known to abuse those who didn't believe in his ideas. Though he was a brute, he was a man thoroughly interested in bettering the arts. It is possible that an act of patronage was the reason our subject was made. To truly understand the Italian Renaissance, you must understand what caused it. Florence, Italy is the stage for this discussion of the Italian Renaissance. But before it became a platform for enlightenment, meaning rediscovering what made the world so great from religion to science, it was dealing with several threats that could affect their liberty and republic. In the 1400s, Florence's republic was different from the republic American knows today. It was built to limit the power given to nobility and work to ensure that no group gained overall political control. Italy was broken into several small nations with different ruling families, meaning rich families that governed them. Through the influence of both the Medici and Julius II, Raphael Sanzo created the Madonna of the Meadow. The Madonna of the Meadow was made in Italy in the year 1505. It is a panel painting that is 44 and a half by 34 inches big. It is now located in Coins de Stroisis Museum in Vienna. The painting depicts three people, the first being the Virgin Mary, which through the hierarchy scale is the focal point of this painting. Baby Jesus on the right and his cousin St. John the Baptist on the left. The background shows a calm and peaceful village which matches the calm on the Virgin's face. The eyesight of these three figures, which can be a symbol for the Holy Trinity, can be followed through implied lines. The first line of sight we see is that of Mary. She is looking down at John the Baptist, who is holding onto a cross-shaped staff, which can be an allusion to both John and Christ's future. The second line of sight is St. John, who is looking at Christ as Christ is looking at him. Raphael gained his skill through his apprenticeship with Petro Progenio. This apprenticeship lasted for four years. Within those four years, Raphael's work became indistinguishable. This is Progenio's painting of the Marriage of the Virgin in 1504. This is Raphael's in that same year. Later, Raphael moved to Florence to develop his own individuality. There, he studied styles by Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. This sketch by da Vinci became a guide to how Raphael would decide to draw the Madonna. Raphael's Madonna might even be the manual that all women should follow to be deemed as ideal. Mary is the largest person depicted in this painting. She represents what was and now is a perfect woman in Christianity. She is loving, pure, and able to care for children. As a virgin, she bared the child of God, which shows her obedience and her submissiveness. Whereas Raphael, aside from his artistic accomplishments, was praised for his charm and known for having many lovers, but not one did he marry. He even died because of excessive sex with his favorite lover, Margreta Letou, who was also known as La Foreña. If we compare the painting of the Virgin to the portrait of Margaret Letou, it is obvious that she lacks submissiveness because of her direct look towards the viewer and that she lacks piety, which Barbara Welter states is the core of women's virtue and the source of her strength. So through the influence of the Virgin Mary, women gained the strength to withstand the man's attempt to turn her into a fallen woman and the curse of becoming an Eve. Eve is known for being the woman who caused the downfall of man who strayed away from her husband and from God. 
In this painting she is naked, while having a serpent whisper in her ear. Although Eve is the mother of life, she is a destroyer of piety, therefore she is no woman at all. For my artwork, I created a digital collage that questions both the ideals of womanhood and the need of piety. For this artwork, I used the painting Raphael created of his mistress and a painting of the Virgin Mary while holding the baby Jesus. In the foreground, you see Mary, whose face has been replaced by the mistress of Raphael holding the baby Jesus. The background or the skyline shows what others would call an ominous sky, but what I call a challenging sky, which shows my distaint for the ideal of piety makes a true woman and what I believe the emotions of men of this time period would show if seeing such a collage. The background or the foreground of this photo is of a real village in Italy. I chose this photo because I felt as if it truly depict the now whereas this painting of the baby Jesus and the Mary depict the then. I also chose the combination of all three elements of the mistress, the Virgin Mary, Jesus, and the realistic photograph to show how times have changed and that women who may have been deemed not women or fallen women of the past are now considered a woman of any kind, though they are still judged as if they are not. Piety is far less important in a wife as it is now. Although history and art depict that there are only two different kinds of women, the Virgin Mary, or the ideal, or an Eve, the unwoman, I believe there are three. The Virgin Mary, who of course Christian men believe are ideal, Eve, who are furthest from the ideal, and mistress of Raphael, those who were raised to become Marys, but ultimately gave in to the temptation of men, or what I like to call human biology. The roles of a woman who practiced Catholicism were simple. Be submissive, be domestic, be religious, and be pure. However, of a woman who still practices Catholicism is still the same. You are to have those ideals, but the idea of a woman has completely changed in this society. Through new find acts of feminism, women are able to regain themselves as separate beings from their husband and separate from their religion. The Virgin Mary is still seen as a household model for what true womanhood is. However, this society allows for young girls and women to develop themselves for their own future than to develop them for the future of a man. And who knows, maybe even Raphael would have liked today's women more.